Bunch of Crunch Tommy, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. And since we all seem to love our rapid fire tips video, hey, we're gonna be doing another one, but this time, things that you should never do in Fortnite. We're gonna go through them real quick, right? 30 game changing tips and tricks, including some that are likely to have never crossed your mind. All right, guys, remember to like the video and sub to the channel if you guys enjoy the content. You guys ready for this Bunch of Crunch Tommy? Let's get going. All right, here we go, here we go. If you're a controller player, never keep your shotgun in anything other than your first slot. Why? Good question. Because when you pull out your pickaxe, build, then try to switch back, it's always going to default to your first slot. So keeping it there ensures that you have the quickest access to your most important gun. All right. Anytime you're expanding to a new box with an enemy above you, never build walls first, guys. Instead, place the roof first, either a floor or a cone, since they're likely to be going for peace control from above, and those pieces are what you want to snag first. All right, if you're playing to improve, you should never camp an arena. A lot of newer players do this to get easy points, but you don't learn much and it really does hinder your improvement. So don't be afraid to fight, guys, as you know, it's definitely one of the ways that you're going to get better. All right, even though fighting helps you improve, you still shouldn't just mindlessly push everybody. Before you engage, consider where the next zone is, what kind of advantage you do have, and if there is potential for third parties to just ruin your day. Because if there is, you're better off waiting for another opportunity. When a new item or weapon gets released, don't avoid using it just because it's different and you don't like it. You know, too many people do this and they end up gaining no experience using these weapons. And, you know, that can be extremely detrimental when other choices get vaulted. Unless your opponent is weak, you should never force fights that are just aimed duels, also known as 50-50s. Instead, try to use editing and building techniques to create cover and peaks that give you the edge, right? For example, if you ramp over your opponent, don't just cut the ramp and just go for the shots. Like rather you should edit out and create a right hand window peek it probably doesn't need to be said but playing with speakers sucks all right if you want to hear footsteps and noises that could potentially save your life in the game you should always play with headphones for the cleanest sound possible man turn off any enhancements like virtual 7.1 surround sound and turn on the 3d headphone setting in fortnite so you can hear directional sounds more clearly all right if you play with a controller you should never copy another pro's dead zone settings dead zones are there for for you to adjust so you can just prevent stick drift as your controller joysticks begin to wear out. And since some players use new controllers, some use old ones, I mean, they're different for everybody. So it's better to experiment to find the lowest dead zone that prevents stick drift for you. Okay, never be dismissive of your own mistakes. Too many of us, man, I can admit myself too, like to blame the game when things go wrong. And while the game has its issues, it does more often than not, we make mistakes that lead to our deaths. And so if you can accept that, then spotting and fixing your faults become way easier all right whenever you knock an enemy in team modes never give up a shakedown opportunity too many of us just go for the kill but as long as you're safe a shakedown provides viable info that you can use to clean up the rest of the enemy team all right you almost never want to leave your back exposed when you go to attack somebody whether perched on a ramp or even facing an opponent's box it only takes a half of a second to build walls around yourself right and that can just be incredibly life-saving in many situations all right never crank for a height in a fight without protecting your head that means cones or floors as you go up so that you're not getting shot by whoever's above even if it means you're cranking slower than you like it's definitely worth it and you need to practice your retakes with this in mind as well all right you should rarely ever fight on ultimate low ground not only is it hard to navigate at times but you also don't have the option to edit your floor and drop down so being able to drop is a big reason pros tend to move up a layer when on low ground so try to keep this in mind following the last tip guys make sure you cone your opponent's box instead of going for a mongrel classic anytime they can just edit their floor to drop the cone usually prevents them from being able to edit which leads them in a better spot for you just to get the limb never spam jump in close quarters combat rookies make this mistake all the time but you know you seldom spot pros doing this because jumping makes it way easier for your opponent just to line up a meaty shot on you so if you instead strafe in different directions and occasionally spam crouch you can become way more harder to hit all right and if you're looking for tips to help you guys win fights you already know what to do man you better check out proguys.com we make it easy for you to connect with the pros including several world cup qualifiers who can awaken your potential man check out our coaching coaches and more today on proguys.com all right don't overcommit for a high ground sure build battles that go to the sky are a blast 
they're fun, I get it, but they waste materials and significantly increase your chances of getting third party. So if your opponent keeps cranking up, try just chopping the bills down and just force them down instead. Overbuilding in general is something you should definitely avoid as well. Like every build of yours should have a purpose, whether it's for cover or movement or even peace control. Obviously, that's easier said than done, but check out our recent creative drills video for a quick way to learn tons of really useful techniques to help build more efficiently. All right, try not to be impatient with your shotgun shots, guys. While flick shots can be useful, good shotgun hits are just vital to the outcome of your match. So when you can, it's often worth taking a fraction of a second to line up your crosshair for a bigger hit. You should never also, never be impatient with your rifle. You know, a lot of players spot an enemy and just open fire right away. But in most situations, it's better to get a closer and, and a strong position so you can just hit more shots, you know, prevent healing and really finish the kill more quickly. All right, guys, never ignore the strengths of your weapons. For example, all right, if you have a tack shotgun, close range is good, but if you have a charge, you ideally want to position just a, t just a few tiles further to take advantage of its superior range. All right, you should also never ignore the strengths of your opponent's weapons since you can usually counter them in some way. Like, if they have a dragon shotgun, keep your distance and just try to block shots with builds, all right? Or if they have an RPG and they're spamming you, you could just close the gap to make it more dangerous for them to use. Whatever it is, just know that you should be playing to their weapon's weaknesses when possible. All right, never leave your edit open after you take a wall and just go for a shot. What you should be doing in most situations is instantly resetting and holding, since if you don't, your enemy will likely return fire. It takes tons of practice, but all the pros do it, and it's a really big deal when fighting competent opponents. All right, never look in the same direction for too long when rotating since there might be enemies lurking behind, waiting to strike you, right? So every five to 10 seconds, just jump and look around and you're gonna end up being a whole lot safer than if you just ignored your surroundings. All right, try not to take fights in the storm, guys. <laughs> While there are definitely situations where storm fights, they do pay off, but in most scenarios, they're only going to just negatively impact you for the remainder of your match. So. To avoid storm fights, try rotating early, you know, through the dead sides of the zones. And of course, don't start fights with enemies just because you see them. At this point in the game, never carry only one healing item. Two or even three healing items has been the meta for what feels like forever, and that's because it's the most well-rounded kit for survival. So no, you don't need four weapons, and the next time you want to drop heals for a sniper or, or SMG, just think again because it only hurts your chances of winning. When tunneling in competitive end games, never leave your tunnels completely open. Like you want one player on your team to just look back every so often and close off potential entrances to prevent enemies from entering your tunnel and getting sneaky kills from behind. Don't ever leave your roof without a cone. Like if you only got a floor above you, it makes it so much easier for enemies just to jump into your box before you can react. You need those two layers of protection at all times when you box up, not just above you by the way, but also a cone or ramp inside your box. When you drop down to take an opponent's wall guys don't drop down then swing your pickaxe instead you should land one swing as you're falling this makes it less likely your opponent notices you in time and you're only going to need one more swing to finish taking the wall you should almost never use wooden built in fights <laughs> Brick and metal are significantly stronger and can often prevent opponents from taking your walls or sneaking in damage before you can react. All right, if you reach the final stages of a competitive match, never give up high ground, even if it's just a few players remaining. Because, you know, a lot of players make this mistake and drop in an attempt to quickly finish off the remaining players. But these final moments can go on for quite a while and you definitely want to be the one controlling high ground. Oh, I got through that super fast. All right. How did I do on time? Over eight minutes, you're playing. Can I do it again? It's okay. It's all right. All right, Bunch of Crunch, sorry. That's gonna be it for today's video. For the things that you should avoid doing wrong in Fortnite. All right, if you guys enjoyed the video, go check out our eight minutes of rapid fire tips for more blazing fast content. If you guys liked the video, you already know what to do. Sub to the channel, connect with your guy on my Instagram at your motivation guide is going down and keep grinding. I'll see you soon.